A massive thank you to Kieran, Kieran, Murs, Jukan and Christian for subscribing to the channel. If you're already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 6 of our F122 My Team Career Mode. Yes, of course, if you missed out on the video that went live earlier on today from the all new Miami circuit, I would definitely recommend going back and checking that one out. But yeah, of course, there will be spoilers in just a moment, so if you don't want those... Go back, check that video out. Definitely well worth a watch. But today then, we head to the Spanish Grand Prix, round six of the year. We're really getting in to the nitty gritty of season one of this all new career mode. As always, a massive thank you to all of you guys for the continued support on the channel. You know, if you're not already, make sure you get yourself subscribed. You know, trying to hit 60k at the moment and of course 100k, the big goal by the end of 2022 here. But... Yeah, Spain, though, before we jump into the weekend, we've actually got to try and spend a little bit more money uh, because we need to try and get some upgrades onto the facilities here. Now, I feel like we need more resource points at the moment, you know, if we want to try and apply more upgrades to the car. So we're going to do a upgrade there on the aero facility. Uh, we're going to try and go around and get all three on the board then. So at least we're sort of earning 150, 225, 300 R&D points each and every week there. But yeah, very, very critical early on in the game there you can see we've still got the most upgrades we possibly can do at the moment in the works uh four upgrades currently going on to the car fingers crossed they'll all be done by next time out uh ready for the monaco grand prix although i think the two at the bottom will be done after monaco before we head to azerbaijan uh having a look though at the drivers world championship charles Leclerc back in winning ways in miami there uh, he's got a what's that 39 point lead now over his teammate Carlos Sainz, sorry, a 29 point lead even over Carlos Sainz. Verstappen still P3 ahead of Sergio Perez there and Hamilton and Russell keeping Red Bull on their toes early on in the campaign. Ferrari dominate the constructors ahead of Red Bull and Mercedes, but has still, look at them, up in P4 overall there with a good gap over the likes of Alpine and Alfa Romeo there. We've got one point on the board, but dropping back slightly behind Aston Martin. But fingers crossed, you know, Spain, a much more high downforce circuit, should play into our hands this weekend. But of course, before we jump into that, we've got another Pirelli hot lap. This time round, let's take an Aston Martin DB11 V12 drifting. Right, but here we are then, back at the circuit Catalonia. We need 11,000 points for the gold medal this time round in, yeah, the Aston Martin DB11 V12. Not sure how we're going to fare trying to drift with a formula wheel, but I suppose we'll give it our best shot nonetheless then here. Yeah, it feels good to be back at Spain. Of course, a few small track changes on F122. Let's just try and keep the throttle in. Oh, no. Nope. Haven't quite got anti-stall in this car, but still going to be rather difficult here. We've, I mean, we've got three minutes to do it, so we should hopefully, you know, sort of get a little way into a second lap there. But still got no idea as to what to expect from the scoring system as... Oh, there we go. 20 points on the board. Might take me a second to sort of build up some confidence in the car. It's through turn three. There we go. That's what I like to see. Try and hang on to it. There, that's a thousand points straight off the bat there. So we're going to keep it going. Oh, no. If you run off the circuit, it all goes away. Right. Okay. I reckon this should be very doable. Oh, 15 seconds left on the clock then as we head back down through the first couple of corners. We just need one more good drift here. And let's just wait and see then whether we can try and get enough points. There we go. Slow the car down. Don't want to risk it. And there we go. 11,000 points on the board. That's going to be another gold medal. I suppose now we better actually get into the serious stuff then. Do quite like the drift physics on F122. It is quite fun to hold a car sideways quite a lot. A bit more difficult on this wheel though. Perhaps I should have grabbed one of my circular rims. But yeah, let's get into the qualifying... Oh, sorry. Free practice even, I should say, from the Spanish Grand Prix. Well, safe to say we learned our lesson, or hopefully we've learned our lesson after the Miami Grand Prix earlier on today. Definitely don't want to run too much aero around these circuits anymore. You know, we've just got to focus on trying to hang on through a lot of the corners there because straight line speed, you just get absolutely destroyed otherwise. But yeah, Spain, you know, it's seen sort of a few more subtle changes around the rest of the lap. You know, it's not only the corner at the end of the back straight. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's subtle changes. It's not quite like Albert Park 
or Abu Dhabi right towards the end of the season. But it does, yeah, I mean, to be... Whoa! Okay, I was just about to say that. Abu Dhabi, I'm really looking forward to now. Not looking forward to looping the car around like that. And now as well, of course, you've got to be really, really careful at this corner at the bottom of the hill because that yellow sausage curb on the exit can be absolutely lethal there as we head up through turn nine. Try and put the power down as best as possible. We've definitely got a lot more top end speed this weekend. As I'm trying to break about a hundred meter board there. We were pretty aggressive on the way in, but just couldn't quite get the car to bite through the second part there as we head through the final sector. Though still hoping to know the high downforce sort of strengths of this car can come into play as we head through the final couple of turns. Over, we'll try to avoid that sausage curve as best as possible. But out of the final corner then. Despite the error first time round, up towards the line, we are still going to pick up the purple. It's that horrible balance early on in this career mode there. Do we have this top end speed so we don't get murked off by everyone? And struggle a little bit through the twisty bits there. You can just see, I mean, we, we showed the error in our practice run a minute ago. And how are we going to fare in the race simulation run? As fingers crossed we can get three purple scores. But yeah, can't help but feel like this weekend we're going to try and hang on a bit through the corners. Yeah, very much still feel like we're hanging on by a knife edge through some of the corners. So I might try and tweak the arrow as we get towards qualifying. But we did pick up a green score on our first lap. Let's just wait and see if I can try and build up a rhythm. Around in the final couple of corners then of my race simulation run. Safe to say things have gone pretty well. I'm definitely building up more confidence with the rear end of the car. It's that final curve is now super aggressive. And there we go. Smash that. 50 R. Oh, sorry. 100. 225 R&D points because of the purple score. Um, but yeah, let's get into our qualifying sim run. Really trying to hang on in there through turn 9. As now as we head down in towards the updated turn 10. Must admit, big, big fan of the new version of this corner. Don't think it's going to quite serve the intended purpose of what they were hoping for. I think Spain's going to need a lot bigger changes to make it a more exciting track. You know, there's a, there's a straight or a much faster corner there that might work. And fingers crossed next year... That's what gets implemented. But through the final corner then. Qualifying simulation run. We just upped both the front and rear wing by a couple of clicks. And we are just, only just, going to still get the green. Let's get into qualifying then. Not feeling too confident, but we'll wait and see. Formula 1 is finally back in 2022. And now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store... Every team now has merch lineups available, whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. Right, well, qualifying day then here from the Spanish Grand Prix circuit. You know, regular viewers of the channel will know. Not my best track in the world. Certainly have struggled around here in the past. Race pace is often stronger than my qualifying trim, though. I don't know what it is about this circuit. I just can't seem to quite get laps hooked up sort of one by one. But when, you know, the pressure's not completely on to try and get one lap in, I seem to fare a little bit better here. So we'll wait and see what happens in qualifying. Really got to try to avoid the curbs through turn two. And at turn three there, as you try and get on the throttle as early as possible. Not quite completely pinned early on in this career mode. There is all way too early at the top of the hill there. Perez immediately down into the walls of the 19s. But weirdly, every qualifying session so far this year, first car to set a lap is always a couple of seconds off the pace. So we might be able to get close to Perez's time, just due to the fact he's in a Red Bull. And they're about a couple of seconds a lap faster. There we go, Sebastian Vettel at 19.3 in his Aston Martin as Lando Norris even faster now in at the McLaren. They're down into the 18s as we're just trying to chuck the car through the final few corners of this first lap. You really just swing it from one side of the circuit to the other there. Avoid the sausage curbs through the final couple of turns. Power out towards the line. Bottas now on an 18.1 and we are going to do an 18.5. Pretty much match Perez like I said. So, not a bad first lap. They're quicker than Albon in the Williams, which I'd hoped for. But, yeah, Esteban Ocon now 18 flat, so times are improving. Well, not confident we're going to make it through into Q2. So, we're actually going to go out for my second run a little bit earlier in this first session there. Just their means, of course. If I don't get the time, then we've got a third run 
to try and... I mean, even if we just squeeze through in P16, I'd probably be pretty happy with that this weekend there. But Drogovic about three and a half tenths clear of me at the moment. Perez still in the drop zone, though, but I'm sure the Mexican has got a lot more pace in the pocket there, as that's why you have to avoid that curb through turn two. Completely upsets the rhythm of the car there, and already another two tenths down. On the end of the lap, though, just building up more and more confidence in the car. About four tenths up as we head through the final sector here. Just trying to make sure we don't do anything stupid now. Right towards the end of this lap there as we ride the curbs through the last couple of corners. Oh, that was a bit aggressive there. That threw away a tenth or so at the final turn. Though nice traction on the throttle. Activate the DRS and we are pretty much going to match Drogovic's time then. So up to P19. But yeah, there's definitely a bit more pace in the car. We get one more run here. I need to get it hooked up. Well, everyone then out for their last ditch attempt here to try and make it into Q2. And I said we were close to Drogovic's time. 1,000th the gap between us at the end of that run there. So let's try and then get one final lap here really nailed. We're still a little way away from Q2 there. And that is not the way you want to start a lap. Big, big wobble as we went through the final corner. And of course, the long front straightaway. That's just going to compromise this time as we head down in towards the first corner there. But, like I said, plenty more time to find after that second run. Again, if we avoid that curb through turn one, we should immediately be nestled up in the green. And a nice tiny run through turn three as well. That means that two tenths that we lost has pretty much all been recovered again. There, obviously, yeah, the rest of our last lap, though, was pretty clean and tidy. So trying to match that is going to be no easy feat there as trying to get the car to the inside curb there. I definitely don't want to slow down as much as I did that time round. We just need a thousandth of a second to try and go quicker than our teammate Felipe Drogovic and we might just find that time trying to put the throttle down through the final corner there. Big lock up on the way in, kind of dragged the car towards the apex rather weirdly but out of the final turn up towards the line. We are going to improve but only just there and I think that's going to put us P18. Yes it does. Quicker than both Williams and Perez not making it through but not where I want it. Well, there we go then, the end of Q1. Charles Leclerc fast is six and a half tenths clear of both Mercedes on second and third there, ahead of Max Verstappen. So Red Bull really struggling early on in the campaign. And talk about Red Bull struggling early on. Perez never improved on that 19.8 there. Latifi, sorry, does make it through into Q2. So that's a bit heartbreaking there. We miss out by just under two tenths of a second at the end of qualifying, so we probably could have just made it through with some better pace there. But yeah, Perez, Albon, Alonso join myself, Drogovic, and Sebastian Vettel out in Q1 there. Alonso is going to be starting at the back like he did in real life. Let's get into it then here for the Spanish Grand Prix. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day, he took his first ever victory for Ferrari, and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730-meter sprint down into Turn 1. This is a 2.9 mile racetrack, overtaking is challenging through the 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Hamilton, Kevin Magnussen, 
and Bottas, Norris, Mick Schumacher, Ocon and Daniel Ricciardo, Joe, Gasly, Max Verstappen. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Stroll, Sonoda, Latifi, Sebastian Vettel and Mr Monaco. Perez, Albon and Fernando Alonso rounds off the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. I'm joined again today by none other than Natalie Pinkham. Tell me, Natalie, obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between Grand Prix. You know a lot about how test drivers and race drivers go about their business. So how do these roles differ in your eyes? Interesting question. There are two very different mindsets. In the old days, of course, they used to cover up to 15,000 kilometers of testing in a season. And that role would be more about working for the team, trying to help them improve the car and drive as systematically as possible so that the data could be analyzed in the most consistent way. When lining up on the grid for a race, however, a race driver's frame of mind is all about what they can get out of the situation on that day. And the car is the tool to help them achieve those goals. Interesting words there from Natalie Pinkham before we get into the Spanish Grand Prix. But here we are then on the grid, round six of the year. And Red Bull not having a fun time out of it so far. Perez starting behind us for staffing with penalties as well. It might be a very, very long afternoon for Christian Horner and co. But, again, the threat of rain late on in a race here could make things very, very interesting towards the end of the afternoon. 33 laps, though, ahead of us around the improved Spanish Grand Prix circuit. So, fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy and have a bit of a better run than we did last time out in Miami. Of course, we got the formation lap first of all, though. Maybe we can actually try and get a good start without having to Nelson PK it. Of course, this was the track he did spin on the formation lap all the way back in 2008. Well, Mercedes have got a good chance this weekend to try and take more points out of Red Bull in the battle for P2. But, I mean, everyone at the moment is just trying to pick up the scraps from Ferrari there. Six wins, in, including the sprint race here, from the opening six races of the season. Of course, five proper wins and a sprint race victory as well there. Five for Charlotte Leclerc, one for Carlos Sainz. Will that continue today? There is almost into the back of Latifi as we try and line ourselves up on the grid. Oh, look at that purple. There we go. Let's see if we can get a good start then. Here for the Spanish Grand Prix. Waiting on those five red lights here in Catalonia. Really don't want many revs, I think, on F122. There is Drogovic. Reactions like a cat. No, it was me being awful. Let's let's pretend to be shocked about that one as we head down towards that one. Then Perez and Albon both going to try and fly around me as well. There was... Oh, that was a lot earlier on the brakes than I expected there. Back at the inside of Sergio we go. As all, we've still got Albon there on the inside. Lots of contact between all three of us there. But we somehow make it through around the outside. Sebastian Vettel, he's apparently just had enough then. Early on in the Grand Prix there, I'm going to chuck himself off the circuit. It's Drogovic and Latifi side by side. Perez wants to make moves early on there. It looks like Verstappen hasn't made the progress he would have wanted off the start of the Grand Prix. And there goes Sebastian Vettel trying to sort of muscle his way around the outside of us as we head down the hill. But not the ideal start then to the Grand Prix is now, yeah, of course, Fernando Alonso. Home race for him as well. I we'll want to try and make up progress early on. Surely he's not going to have a look at the inside through to nine. A little bit of contact there as Alonso tries to squeeze me out. But we should have a bit better top end speed this time round. As down the back straight we go. We've got Latifi battling oh, with Sergio Perez there as I try and put the power down. With still Alonso and I side by side there. Can we go around the outside through the next corner there? Try and put the power down. No, there was a willing to give up on it just yet. As oh, Alonso takes a lot of curb. We'll hold the inside and we'll squeeze him out, I think. End of lap one then. Rather predictably, Charles Leclerc leads the way here in Spain. But we've lost one spot there, down to P18. But Drogovic getting a world leave start. Russell, clearly not. George Russell into the pit end at the end of lap one. So our top three is Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz there, and I'm pretty certain Hamilton. Yeah, still in third. Is Drogovic now side by side with Paris through the first couple of turns? I think Paris is just going to try and say goodbye to us back markers. Whoa, Fernando Alonso there. Kamikaze style move up the inside through the final sector. I mean, we'll firmly slam the door on him accidentally. 
didn't realise he was even going to try it there. I've never seen that before by the AI, but fair play. Fernando, a wily old fox. And looks like this weekend we've actually got some fairly respectable top-end speed. That might be critical as Perez trying to make more moves. Oh, saying that though, here comes Fernando Alonso up the inside. As we head back down towards Tub 1, we're going to try and use a bit of battery. But El Plan there, the Alpine, of course, very, very slippery down the straights. Oh, he's going to run wide, though, through Turn 1, so we will come back at him. As we head through 2 and 3 there, can Alonso hook it up around the outside? No, he can't. He's often quite quick off this corner, though. But we will hang on once again there. We live to fight another day, as I'm just a bit worried. Latifi and Drogovic starting to build up a gap. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. I think it's Alonso. And what a disastrous weekend it's been for the Alpine man there. Couldn't do a lap in qualifying, I'm guessing due to a technical issue. And Fernando Alonso out. Alonso out then of the Spanish Grand Prix. What a weekend to forget. Well, yeah, Alpine just starting to close back in the gap slightly as we are fractionally closing in on at Nicholas Latifi here. We've just got to try and get some more hooked up laps in. Try and build up more confidence with the car. Drogovic, though, absolutely flying this weekend. He's now applying pressure to that stroll up the road. Loving a bit more fight from our Brazilian teammate. Every time out of that final corner, Latifi always gains about a tenth on me, but finally then, inside the DRS of the car in front. Trying to make sure we don't get too overconfident on the ERS usage either. You know, once we get past the TV, we're going to have to try, or if we can get past him, we're going to have to try and build up a bit of a gap there as well. As Gap to Drogovic just starting to come back down. I think I don't know whether that's just because he's fighting there as all well. that is a risky line through turn three out of the dirty stuff. Let's just keep our head down, see if we can make a move work on the Canadian before the pit stops. If he's desperately trying to hang on in front of me at the moment as we head through the final couple of turns. And, oh, you can see that time around. He actually didn't get a good run out of the final corner. Albon behind us certainly did. Still is Ricardo again the first round into the pits here in yet another Grand Prix. But can we try and get a run on Latifi as we head back down towards Tom and get all over the back of the Williams? Try and get late on the brakes down around the outside. Use all the curb through turn two. We will slot past him then. So up now into P16 of the Grand Prix there as that was a cheeky little move. But now we've got to try and open up the gap before Latifi can come back at me and also... Because I want to try and get back up with Drogovic, who's, yeah, like I said, having a fantastic race so far. That, that could make things interesting then. Rain coming a lot earlier than originally anticipated then here in Spain. Could we have to make the call to Inters? Right, well, we've gapped Albon then. So, sorry, we've gapped Latifi even, I should say. So we're now about one and a half seconds ahead of the Williams. But Drogovic still every lap. Pulling about another tenth or two away from me. We really need to start trying to nail these laps again. But again, I don't really want to sort of risk the car, you know, risk spinning out anything like that. Especially as the tyres are just beginning to fade slightly. But yeah, the real question is now, of course, what do we do when it comes to pitting? Oh, that's what I mean about the tyres. Still struggling a bit for grip. Um, yeah, do we go onto hard, sort of keep the strategy as normal and pray the rain stays away? Oh, yeah, with tyre strategy, do we then go on to a set of softs or mediums and hope to be a whole lot quicker in the second half or for a few laps before the rain does arrive? I think at the moment we've just got to keep it simple this weekend. You know, we tried it at Imola. Didn't quite work out, although saying that, we did then score our first and only points of the season on that weekend. But, yeah, just trying to still close up the gap for Drogovic. So a little bit of wobble through the final corner. That's going to compromise us a bit of time. Oh, that's not what we need. I mean, Spain's not the worst track for it, but still would rather have as many ponies as I can from the car. As oh, just through in the final sector again. Definitely struggling a bit more with front end bike. Team on us in at the end of this lap, but the tyres are still producing good times. So I think we're going to stay out for at least another couple there. Of course, Drogovic now will probably box the end of 15. So we're pretty much going to make it a half distance then as Bottas and Gasly both into the pits there. Hopefully we won't trip over Valtteri too much. We are actually going to be side by side as we head down to Wallstel 1 there. But the fin on cold rubber will swoop into the apex and we'll now be able to P14. As for the first time in a long time, we actually took time out of Drogovic that lap. There we go, Drogovic into the pits at the end of lap 15 then. So we are going to briefly be in the points. 
in this Grand Prix. Feels like a while since I've been able to say that in this career mode. As yeah, I'm in the 10th place we go then. Bottas and Russell though not far behind us. As we are going to come out right yeah, behind Lando Norris. And Max Verstappen who's done a decent recovery over the last few laps there. But Lando Norris on cold hard tyres. Or oh, a little bit of wheel to wheel contact. So we try and hook it up around the outside of the McLaren here. Don't really think he's going to be one we can battle with too much today. Let's get on with it Lando. Come on. Can't just sit there on the apex. We've we've got a race to do as well. Because we could get undercut here by the Williams. So here comes Bottas then to the outside as we head down the back straight. We're just going to go slightly later on the brakes there. And actually get the car rotated in quite tidily for the first time in a while. As no you don't Bottas. Don't want to lose any time trying to get towards the pit lane here. Mark's also just warned me that the rain now they reckon is about 15 minutes away. So definitely just going to go on to a set of hards as originally planned there, because it's quite clear it's going to be quite late on into the afternoon. The rain is going to arrive, but into the pit lane we come then, here in Spain. Not convinced we'll have really jumped anyone. And yeah, Drogovic there in some clear traffic, but looks like uh, Sebastian Vettel following us in to the pit lane. Can we get a nice, clean, tidy stop here in Barcelona? There we go. You want to actually hit it with about 0.3 seconds left on the clock. Nice tidy stop then that time round by the team. As there we go, deactivate the pit limiter. George Russell, we've actually, no, George Russell was behind us already, wasn't he? Was boxed in one of the earliest pit boxes there. Is our cold rubber? Got to remember that through turn one. We've just got no grip whatsoever. It feels like you're driving on ice out of the pit lane. Here and George Russell got a lot more confidence in that Merc. And of course, Alvin behind us on some warmed up tyres there. So the TPs must have dropped massively back then. But now, oh, as you can just see there, we've got nothing we can do against Alex Albon. The undercut has worked for the Williams. But we should have fresher rubber right the way through to the end of the Grand Prix. So, fingers crossed we can apply pressure. Well, so I don't know what Albon's done since his pit stop. The Williams is absolutely flying as we head back down towards turn one there. The gap up to three seconds. I was hoping now we'd start to see it go the other way again. But it hasn't happened just yet. We've still got 15 laps to go. Oh, horrible run out the final corner. I think Sebastian Vettel now is probably going to run past me as we head back down towards turn one. We'd actually been doing pretty well that lap against Alex Albon there. But there goes Sebastian Vettel. We're going to get relegated back down to P20 in this Grand Prix. We just, like I said, I know I said it in qualifying. Spain, not my best track on the F1 calendar. And certainly that has shown true today. But yeah, just really, really struggling. I'm hoping now we can just hang on to Seb's coattails and... Fingers crossed he can drag us back towards Albon in the latter stages of this race. Still got the chance of rain, though, which could spice this up as Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, battling for the race lead, battling for the fast lap bonus point as well, it would appear. I mean, I don't know what's going on at the moment. Everyone is just romping away from me in front. I mean, even the TP again is starting to close the gap back down, and we're not far away from our PV in this Grand Prix. We've just seemingly lost all pace once we got onto the hard tyres here, it's like playing F1 2021 all over again there. It's just no confidence through the corners at two-thirds race distance here. And Sebastian Vettel, I want to try and hang on to him. We never even got any DRS. Okay, I mean, in the moment, we're setting PBs or pretty much matching them each and every lap. I think Sebastian Vettel's got the bit between his teeth at the moment trying to close up to Albon. And the gap to Alex is getting closer to staying level each time through but yeah 10 laps to go here from Spain and unless we see the rain I think we're pretty much cons consiled yeah to P20 in this race the highs of Imola albeit they were only yesterday feel a long time ago now Ooh, so there we go the I think we're just seeing the rain we just see a little bit on the halo so now things could get interesting then in the final few laps here in Spain, but we got to hope the track probably gets quite damp quite quickly. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, the AI tend to have an advantage when the track gets a bit slippery. So we've got yellow flags out as we head up through Sector 3. I think it's Lance Stroll who's just looped it round then in this Grand Prix. So well. we're going to try to look to the inside of the Canadian there. Um, I mean, yeah, Lance Stroll very, very late on in the day. That's going to completely ruin any good chance of points. We try and head out of the final turn once again. So now we've got even more trying to defend ourselves. Is Lance Stroll going to be able to get a good run? 
Yeah, Drogovic, eight seconds up the road there as here comes Sir Lance. Back up the inside in towards turn one. And again, we'll read him like a book there. Straight back up the inside we go. And P19 will remain ours for now as the rain definitely started to get a little bit worse. Five laps to go then here from Spain and still, of course, yeah, nowhere near wet enough for the intermediate tyres just yet. We are keeping Sir Lance at bay, but only just at the moment. They're batting out with the Canadians. It's not quite where I wanted to be towards the end of this Grand Prix there. It looks like Seb's going to make a move on Alban. So oh, not a curve there through turn one, but it really still struggling late on in the day. Their track definitely getting a little bit slicker. And like I said, that tends to give the AI a bit of an advantage there. Whilst you're careful about not lying at the rear wheels, of course, they don't care. They can just run perfectly on the limit of grip. Absolutely through the exit of a the corner there as Lance Stroll, I think that time round, just tripped up slightly. But we're also, again, very, very close to getting lapped here. Oh, here we go, Lance Stroll. Got a bit of a better run at the final turn that time round. We're going to have to drain the battery as we head towards someone there. And once more, we will just have enough to try and hang on late on in the day but team have also just told me album hasn't hasn't got a mechanical issue anything like that just seems to be struggling a bit for pace late on here so the gap has come back down by about a second or so so nice to know we're still quicker than someone today but yeah ferrari is both closing in rather rapidly as well we might just get lapped before the end of this Right, well, maybe about to start then the final lap here of this Spanish Grand Prix. And look at this, Lance Stroll now. He's got a big, big run on me as we head down towards turn one there. It is going to be a drag race between myself and the Aston Martin there. But Lance Stroll down around the outside he goes. Have we got anything? No, no confidence to try and get the car back up the inside of turn one there. And one Canadian's moved past me. We've now got warnings about blue flags as well there. We're going to wait for Latifi to jump out the way and hopefully give us a bit of safety. Can we stay close enough to Lance that maybe we didn't manage to use the blue flag star advantages last time round, but we might try and do it here as we head down the hill. I think our best bet is let the two Ferraris through down this next straight and then, oh, come on, our Sainz, please just go for it. Ah, why are we racing Carlos Sainz? It's one of the best battles we've had all day. Had to be able to hang on there against the Spaniard, but again... Blue flags here, yeah, really not able to make them work the way I'd want it, unless we can stick close to the Ferrari here. Latifi, ever the opportunist, tries to have a look around the outside. And will Stroll move out of the way for Carlos Sainz towards the end? And looks like Charles Leclerc, it's going to be yet another race victory for the Ferrari man there. And another Ferrari 1 2 is. Oh, Stroll's bottled it! Round the outside of Lance Stroll, we go there. A lot of contact as we try to cut in. Stroll, desperate not to lose the place there. And the cheekiest of moves back on the Canadian there. Round the final corner. It's only P19 here in Miami. We need to find form. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Another Spanish Grand Prix is over and what a special race it was. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we could talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those that we've witnessed today. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. Let's have a look then at the driver's standings. Charles Leclerc, currently leading the championship standings, extends his lead even further with this result. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Natalie Pinkham, come on, who do you pick? Well, you can't fault 
Anything that Sergio Perez did out on track today, he drove flawlessly, making him an easy pick. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Ferrari continue to extend the gap at the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who've pushed themselves further up the order. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. Well, there we are then, the end of the Spanish Grand Prix there. And safe to say, today's races haven't quite gone as well as I would have wanted there. But, you know, we'll find form at some point this season. You know, we're going to have a good couple of races in the books there. You know, get a decent car, everything like that. And I promise you guys, the results will come there. But Ferrari, a team that the results are already coming for. Another one too. Fastest lap. Oh, sorry. Yeah, fastest lap for Carlos Sainz. Their pole position in the race victory, sorry, for Charles Leclerc. And it's another 25 points on the board there. Hamilton rounds out the podium ahead of Verstappen, K-Mag and Sergio Perez there. I said at the start it would be a good weekend for Mercedes to close points in on Red Bull, but they haven't done so as George Russell with those early mishaps means he finishes down in 12th place there. Bottas, Ocon, Schumacher and Lando Norris rounding out the top 10 there. And yeah, I mean, fair play Felipe Drogovic had really, really good pace this weekend there. And unfortunately for us, another race where we finish our lap down when all is said and done there. We do still beat, though, both Canadians and Fernando Alonso to the chequered flag there. Championship-wise, though, Esteban Ocon with those points jumps up past Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo. Charles Leclerc now a 37-point lead over his teammate in the championship. And look at that, Hamilton really now hassling Red Bull. So just three points back behind Sergio Perez at this stage of the game. We're still 18th there still. Zhou Guan Yu hasn't scored in that Alfa Romeo. Can't believe that. After the opening few races there. Both Williams and Felipe still yet to score there. Constructors-wise, though, nothing changes either. Ferrari now with an 85-point lead at the top of the table. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will return tomorrow. The jewel in the Formula 1 crown. It's going to be a street circuit double. Monaco then Baku. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.